So thank you all for coming. What were you trying to accomplish? The, um, what was I trying to accomplish? Uh, simply to allow people to have uh, some sense of who I am as a human being and uh, what I stand for. Do you think you accomplished that? I do. I do. I mean, one of the things that we've heard across this, you know, entire campaign is that I come across as, you know, as somebody with an awful lot of integrity, somebody who's willing to tell the story as it is and, um, and, and present the facts. Um, that I have the skill set necessary to uh, turn this state around, and I think I think we accomplished that. All right, we got basically five days ago. If you can count and say today's over. Mm -hmm. What's the state of the race? How do you feel? What's it look like? I I feel incredibly good about it. The last couple of weeks, as you know, most of us spend our time on the phones, and we spend our time you know going to events. Um, we're seeing an uptick of uh, not only folks signing on board to the campaign, asking to help, um, spreading the message, uh, making contributions. Um, it, is, it is clearly, the momentum is clearly picking up. Um, and we've seen that actually all summer long. As you know, we got a fairly late start. Um, we you know, announced in February, we made some uh, structural changes uh, in late March going into April, got off the ground in late April, and uh, ever since then, it has gained steady momentum. I would say that we're actually peaking uh, this week, which feels very, very good. And um, we're seeing that from all corners. It's sort of interesting how um, the most fascinating part of this campaign is how folks have become so excited about it. They're off on their own making their, our, their own Jackie Tilly Silly t-shirts. They're making cookies with the label, you know, Jackie Silly for governor. They've come up with so many creative ideas. And um, so we feel uh, truly blessed that, you know, that we have so many supporters across the state that are working hard for us. Walk us through the decision that you, when you loaned yourself $50,000 this week. Well, we, we knew exactly what needed to be done. We knew what the resources needed to be. And uh, so we made, we made that decision. And, uh, you know, wanted to, it, the, part of it was that we wanted to make sure that zombie ad, which people were just screaming for more of, stayed up on, on air. So, um, you know, that was a, uh, um, that was a decision, as, you know, that we made, uh, you know, to make that commitment to the campaign. Did you always uh, let's, doing it? Let's, uh, let's face it, you know, we, our, so many folks have um, contributed so much of their own resources to this campaign. And I would just tell you the story of a woman who I called the other day, um, who was away visiting her ill sister in Washington, and who got my message. So she called me back, and not only did she make a contribution while she was out there in Washington, she said, if I get back, I will make sure I give you the rest of whatever I have left in my Social Security. I wanted to cry and offer to send her a check, um, but when you know that you've got folks that will offer that kind of support, and she's certainly by far not the only person that has told us that, you know, that they want to make sure that we get over the finish line, then our own commitment to, to this campaign, um, you know, seemed a, a prudent thing to do as well. Do you feel like the zombie ad has had a tangible impact? I mean, none of the other candidates had ad, snippets of ads shown during this debate tonight. That's the only one. Do the zombie like ad was remarkable. It was everything that I asked for. I, I was given two ads, uh, nice, safe ads. We knew that the biggest challenge was name recognition. And from the moment that was out of the gate, we, we dropped those two ads on a Friday. The next day I was walking through the Latino Festival in, uh, in Manchester and immediately started having people say, oh, you're Jackie Silly, you did that zombie ad. And I said, and I, and I don't know how many times we aired it, it wasn't very many. And I said, oh, you saw the ad? Oh, we saw it on Telemundo News. So Telemundo covered it on the news. WMUR did a very nice uh, news piece on it. Um, NHBR wrote, uh, did, a, did a piece on it. Um, and then it was written up in Huffington Post and Daily Coast and so on. So no, 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 that ad, um, that ad has returned probably 20, 21 fold what we put into it. And I think one of the things that it said to people beyond just, oh, that's a marvelous ad. And Pat Griffin called it the best political ad he ever saw. So I'm not going to argue with Pat Griffin. Um, one of the things that that ad sh demonstrated to people, and we've been hearing it ever since, is, oh, she thinks outside of the box. That campaign is really creative. They think outside of the box. They look at different ways to get there. And what people recognized was that we stretch every dollar into something that's almost unrecognizable. It's no secret we're the lowest funded campaign. No. But we have taken every single dollar 
and made it count, you know, strategically. And that's sort of part of it's my heritage. And when you grow up in Berlin, New Hampshire, you better stretch that first dollar really far because you don't know where the second one's coming from. And it is exactly, and the other thing that people are making the, the connection to, and it's certainly one that I make, is that it's exactly the kind of governor I'll be. We will think outside of the box. We'll be creative in looking for uh, new solutions to the challenges that we face because they are significant. Don't make any bones about that. They are really significant. And, um, you know, we're going to need to do exactly what we've done in this campaign. So I'm just as proud as I could be about how we've run this campaign, how we've used our resources very strategically and very carefully. And I think it demonstrates when you run your campaign that way, I think it also says something about the kind of governor you'll be. Did you feel coming into tonight that you had to draw a very stark distinction between yourself and Maggie Hassan, and do you feel that you did that? I think that um, we are very, very different people. I think the you know, it, it, oftentimes that you know, just the watching the way we um, present ourselves uh, suggests some differences. I think my personal story um, is a, you know is a differentiator that folks notice. Um, I think that the skill set that I bring, and the most important skill set, I think for this upcoming election, for the governor's office, is somebody who truly understands the impact of policies on our economy. If you think about what's been done in the past couple of years, this has been a cut-happy men mentality by this particular legislature. Um, we know from plenty of evidence across the world and across the country, you cannot cut your way to prosperity. Every family knows that. Every business knows that. That doesn't mean that you don't run a very, very um, cost-effective and efficient business, but it also means that when you need resources, you apply those strategically to uh, making sure, especially when you're in business, so that you can grow that business. So the most important set of tools is uh, you know, that business skill set that understands the impact on an economy and how to revitalize it. And that's, that's really what I bring to this. So Probably you, the most important skill. Do you feel like you got that out for any of you? Got it out as much as we could. I mean, remember, we're answering questions in one minute, in one minute segments. So, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I said that during the debate. Hopefully uh, people heard it. Uh, what's the difference between a, a promise and a, a making a promise and taking a pledge? I think that um, saying that you stand for certain values is, um, is something that all of our citizens have a right to expect. These anti-tax pledges are not values. They're simply saying that we're taking specific options off the table. Why would anybody? I mean, a family doesn't do it. Businesses don't do it. Why would we expect government to do it? Um, Judd Bregg himself said this week, you know, you, your paper ran it. Um, everything needs to be on the table. Both sides of the balance sheet need to be there to be examined. That isn't, you know, that isn't a commitment or, or even an interest in getting out in front of any specific revenue stream. What it is, is a prudent way to say, let's take a look at how we resource government effectively, and if we can find a better way why aren't we open to it? You know, in 1970, Governor Peterson said, the economy isn't working. It's not working. We had, about March 25th, you had these 18-wheelers come in, and they, businesses would load their equipment up, they'd load their inventory on, they'd drive over the state lines, they'd sit there until about April 2nd, they'd roll back in. That wasn't good for warehousing, it wasn't good for our general fund, it wasn't good for business, it wasn't good for anybody. And so they sat down, and instead of taking pledges, instead of being ideologically wedded to something, they sat down and said, we want to find solutions, actual solutions to the challenges we face. So they came up with a business profits tax. That tax alone, which is too high today, eliminated 18 separate property-related business taxes. 18. We've got great minds in this state. We can do this again. And there are all kinds of ways to get there. What did you make of uh, Maggie Hassan's response about her 2002 position? She said that she didn't support any complaints, but she just didn't take the pledge, and of course now she does. Uh, personally, I, you know, I, I think I think the pledge uh, across the board is nothing but a political gimmick. I, I have been in many forums with all of the candidates, and I hear them do the same thing. 
yes, I'll promise to save the, you know, the agricultural department because we know how important it is to all of you farmers. Yes, I will get rid of the waiting list and I'll uh, provide more education and more transportation to all of the folks who have disabilities. Yes, I will support all of those children's programs. I've seen this over and over and over again on the, you know, on the, um, the campaign trail. And yet, if you look at the other side of the aisle, they've gone even further with the kinds of pledges they've taken. They pledged uh, to cut spending, cut taxes, cut government, and, oh, by the way, turn us into a right-to-work state. So these are nothing more than way they're political gimmicks. They're ways of, you know, of pandering, as far as I'm concerned. And that's, you know, that's just my own take. Uh, going back to your uh, zombie ad, do you consider you Gallen, Gene Shaheen, and John Lynch zombies? I listen. That was a light take on something that I think is an outdated, antiquated um, eligibility test for anybody who runs for statewide offices. I have such confidence in and in the um, intelligence of our voters, um, their ability to understand when they've been. Um, you know, when when somebody's using something for political gain, um, they know what their property tax taxes are. I, I've said, you know, I don't know when everybody else's property taxes come. For us, for my family, they come just before Christmas. Just before Christmas. And every year you look at that property tax bill and you say, okay, what does that mean now for what we can do for our children and our grandchildren? Um, I, I think it's very similar to most people around the state. Twice a year those property taxes come. Everybody knows if we do nothing else, that's a promise to continue to raise their property taxes. And, the, and, and we cannot grow or innovate our way out of this. I've looked at all of the numbers, and in a best case scenario, given what we've been handed, what the next governor and the next legislature face, um, best case scenario says we need to either grow between roughly 3 to 5 percent. In the worst case scenario, we need to grow somewhere between around 8 to 11 percent. We know that it's somewhere in between. We're not going to see the best case scenario. Some of those lawsuits, I mean, they have, they've inspired over half a million dollars, half a billion dollars in lawsuits, um, this particular legislature. Um, they have uh, put into place 170 to 270 million dollars worth of tax breaks that don't kick in until next year. They've cut this budget 11 percent. They have rained down on our communities over 200 million dollars worth of cost shifting and they are fully prepared to shift more. You've heard Bill O'Brien say he wants to send, you know, he wants to cut another 400 million dollars. You can cut anything you want. It doesn't mean the need goes away. So, you know, our, our folks know what's happening to them. They just also, they and, and I hear everywhere, from Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, they want to see tax reform. What they don't want is an additional burden, and I don't want it either. I have four kids here, eight grandchildren. I want them to be able to enjoy our quality of life, and I don't want to see them burdened any further than they are. And one more. Um, you were attacked at one point by Maggie Hassan mm -hmm. showing differences, and you decided not to defend yourself on that. Why? Because I, I don't spend, I mean, we can, we can, you know, I could talk about those. I mean, she knows that, uh, you know, she knows the story of the payday lending and that I was looking for other options. And uh, so to me, with, with the amount of bills that we um, worked on in the legislature, you know, we could go back and we could nitpick every single one of them. I'm looking forward. My vision is about what this state needs to be. Um, in five years, in ten years. That's where my focus is, that's where all my energy is, and um, you know, I think frankly with the challenges that we face, that's where all of us should be focused as opposed to looking behind us. Thank you. Thank you.